The business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB is proudly brought to you by MTN Business Broadband. First National Bank, Bank of the Changeables. The Mikes Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge, with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. It's a season of joy, a season of giving, uh, it's a festive period and so uh, we are all happy celebrating the birth of Christ and uh, spending a lot more. But uh, please uh, be mindful because uh, COVID and all of these other things are still in the air, so as much as possible, much as you have fun, much as you celebrate uh, please do that with a lot of caution okay if you've not vaccinated please the ministry of information and the ministry of health have been going around suggesting to each and every one of us to get vaccinated so please 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 have fun have fun responsibly because we really want to see you next year because there's a there are a lot of amazing things happening on this show and with my guests whom i'm going to introduce in a short while and and a few other things so so many things amazing things happening and so we want to see you hail and hearty uh, for 2022 uh, but with that said um today i'm happy you're joining us eh? you know why because uh, the gentleman i'm going to speak to is uh, somebody who is doing a lot they are changing the narrative and like i said it's a festive season and so you and i know a lot of people are binge watching things and you know streaming stuff here and there blah 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 well, uh, he's uh, one of the people trying to change the narrative. It's Africans producing a lot of content and creating a platform where you and I can get a lot more of our content onto that platform for a lot of Africans and even a lot more. So uh, creating a platform, so it's Africans creating a platform for Africans. What's better than this? I'll tell you more after this. When we connect, everything is possible. Whatever seems unreachable becomes even closer. Building partnerships. Redefining the norms. Because when we connect, being there becomes possible and new ideas come to life stay ahead and stay connected with mtn business broadband superior internet solutions that drive your dreams sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or whatsapp 0244-308-111 Many thanks for staying with us. This is the business edition of 21 Minutes with KKD. My name is Kwabna Chencha in the Boateng. Like I keep saying, I'm grateful that you always take time off to watch us. Uh, it's never really easy to spend a lot of data and bundle and the like watching, but I'm, I'm really, really happy that you uh, do take time off to watch us. The show is probably brought to you by MTN Business. MTN Business is your partner for growth. And what they keep saying is, listen, if you are young, micro small scale medium scale enterprise owner and you are still struggling with getting your business off the ground and the like i think you're just missing one key element that's it it's the mtn sme plus package that's all you are missing once you get that i think you are you're set for life and uh, it will help provide the platform for you to do a lot of amazing things all you have to do is very simple uh, you dial star 5060 hash today and you'll be able to enjoy a lot of options. In fact, so from data packages to call packages to SMS and the like, able to enjoy all of that right on the MTN SME Plus package. Also for Mondays, every Monday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you can make free calls to any MTN number. What more do you want? Uh, Do well to dial star 5060 hash today to sign up. Or you can WhatsApp or call the number 0244-308-1114 for more information and stay connected everywhere you go. The show is also brought to you in partnership with First National Bank Ghana. And as I keep saying, for me, my target is you. You should get a, a solid enough partner to help you grow your business. The bank. First National Bank. The bank of the changeables. That's the bank that can help you 
do that from all kinds of support. You just walk in there and discuss with them. But the first thing you need to do is to switch though. So once you do the switch, you get three months fee free banking from First National Bank Ghana. And you are able to, uh, after that, enjoy a lot of goodies with the bank. It's the bank of the changeables. A small change you make today can help you make a lot of uh, strides tomorrow. So please do not hesitate in contacting First National Bank today. You can visit any of their branches in Accra, Kumasi, or Takrade, or call the number 0242. 435050. That's 0242435050. And they will send one of their friendly business bankers to you to start the switch process. First National Bank. Now, how can we help you? Uh, again, because it's a festive season and you're buying a lot of stuff for the home, for the kids and everybody else, the gadgets and the like, if you want to stream, uh, you need a lot of uh, gadgets, so a television set and all of these things. Yeah, the place to be is the Makers Electronics. Just get there. Any of their shops scattered all over the country, just visit any of them. Walk in and uh, grab any device you want at hugely discounted prices, up to about 87% discount. Charlie. What more do you want? Okay. Now time for us to have a conversation. And uh, Louis Manu, it's a, he's a gentleman, a lot of people, maybe you may have seen him. Yeah, he's a fine boy. So of course, when you see him on TV and the like, you, I'm sure you take note of that, particularly for some of the ladies. Yeah, yeah, check, you know, the sideburns, check this. Okay, he has a bald head, check. <laughs> and the like, yeah. But um, aside that, he's uh, one of, uh, few gentlemen doing quite uh, a lot of amazing things and putting Ghana on the map. But who am I to tell you so much more when he's here? So uh, I'll get to have a quick conversation with him on uh, Yflex, right? Yeah. You finally heard about it? Yflex. Louis, good to see you. Good to see you too. Good to see you too. <laughs> How are you doing? Fine, thank you. How's um, it going? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really good. And I'm, I'm glad that you heeded this call and decided to uh, come to Ghana and help us with this interview. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so, happy yeah. to be here. So he's part of the mm -hmm. boggers who have landed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Louis, uh, t tell us a bit about, uh, listen, there's a lot I want to talk about when it comes to y flicks because uh, I was sharing with you a short while ago that I've been on your platform, I've seen a few things and I've been very impressed. Yeah. So we'll come to that. Yeah. But let's get to know Louis. Yeah. Who are you? What do you do? What's your background? How did you even end up in this space? <laughs> So, yeah, I'm a, well, from a very humble beginning. Oh, that's what they all say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I've lived most of my life in Kumasi. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I was born in Bekwai. Okay. Moved to Kumasi when mm. I was very young. Um, went to King's International mm. um, Secondary School, Opokwari School. Oh, okay. Um, I went to KNUSD, oh. um, did computer science. Mm. Um, I mean, there and then I got in love with like crazy, crazy computing. I mean, even before KNUSD, I did a bit of NIIT. Okay. So that was when I was into mostly tech stuff. So okay. programming, doing a whole lot here and there, building websites, um, and a lot more. I built one of the, some of the famous websites you've seen out there. I don't want to mention them. Right. I, I might right. not have the royalties now yeah. <laughs> to do that. Yeah. Right. But um, crazy an amount of websites. And I went into, um, I think my final year project at uni, I did um, a bit of um, mobile app development. Okay. I, you know, I built the first, you know, small mobile app development on these, um, I would say first, second generation phones. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. To be able to connect, talk to people mm. um, and a lot more stuff. So Bluetooth transfer, um, these kind of technologies mm. way back mm. at KNUSD. Um, and that is when I got in love with tech. Um, and lucky enough, I remember I was just there one day after uni, and we, we were all planning where to do a national service uh -huh. and stuff. Uh -huh. and I had a call from Tigo, and they were like, hey, would you like to come for an interview for national service wow. and stuff? Yeah, so I ended up at Tigo, um, worked through there a bit as, um, as a mediation specialist. Okay. Um, went into enterprise applications, built softwares and stuff in there. Um, very telecom from mm. the beginning. Um, uh, whilst my love for, for, for mobility and stuff was in there, I fell in love with, with telco, you know, um, apps and being integrated in the core system of um, telecom technology and stuff. Mm. So I did that for like five years, um, moved to the UK to do my master's. 
and that is when I, you know, I was open to a whole lot of stuff, right. you know. Um, work with several startups. I'm not going to mention all of their yeah, names. No, no, um, about six of them. Um, uh, Bolt, um, not the current Bolt. Okay. Bolt has a payment platform. Okay. Um, initially used to call text, text two applications. They right. used to handle all of Hillsong, Hillsong International, oh, their okay. payment platforms okay. and stuff. Okay. So I used to project management, uh, project manage that project. Um, in the integrating systems, testing, and a whole lot. So I got a feel of a startup ecosystem, mm. and that really spiced me up because, like, um, in as much as I went out to do my masters, uh, my MBA and stuff, I also wanted to merge it with my tech right. skills. Um, so I ended up with a startup at Google Campus um, called Revision App. And it was amazing that I built um, over 22 different apps wow. in there, um, on the Google Play Store, on the app stores as well. And that's when, it, that's when I felt in love with, um, you know, real computing power, being able to build things technologically, mm. whilst um, managing teams commercially as well. Right. So I got a lot of commercial skills um, mixed with my MBA stuff. Mm. And then um, while I was in there one day, I, I was like, you know what, I'm going back to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> because I saw, I saw a lot of my friends, you know, build stuff. And I had, I had several, you know, it's a, Google Campus is a startup house. It's like an ecosystem yeah. where you have a lot of startups in there, you know, coming up with different Everybody ideas. Trying, a lot trying of ideas. different yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I had like crazy ideas around streaming mm. and payment. So I had these two things like, you know, always on the beat. Right. And I was building um, a streaming, a music streaming them platform on a site called Beats. Okay. I mean, if you go on my LinkedIn page, you still find it there. I still want to do it one, one way or the other, maybe in future. But then um, I came in, um, one day I decided the next two weeks I was in Ghana. So uh, for me, the decision was quite so very you just, quick. So it was a very sudden switched. thing. Yes. I want to go to Ghana. I want to go to Ghana. But I've what seen was the, people. What was the trigger? Um, I had a lot of people at Google campus all moving their businesses to Africa. Oh, so I was okay. like, dude, I'm African. What would make me want to stay here, yeah. work with these big companies, get, you know, well, paid well. Yeah. But then I wanted to have this entrepreneurial zeal yeah. to start something on my own mm -hmm. and to build you know, bring something to existence. True. And um, I've always wanted to bridge gaps, like, you know, come up with ideas that would integrate that world and the experience that I have in there mm. with the local um, entities here. Mm. So the plan was to, uh, well, do it with streaming. So I started building the streaming app. So I built an entire streaming app, um, wanted to integrate mobile money. That time, um, the whole mobile money ecosystem wasn't too friendly. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm talking of somewhere around, I think, 2013, okay. 2014 in there. Yeah. I was just bringing it was, up then. Yeah, I was just bringing it. It was there, but it wasn't too open. Yeah. People didn't have like APIs that you could actually connect to okay. and build your own platforms. Right. And then I was like, well, why don't I start a payment, payment company? Mm. Um, and then I also started that because I couldn't really further my dreams with the streaming, even though I've got like crazy ideas, build a platform, um, went to see some few people within the musical group, right. um, Ochiami Kwame, I went to see him, uh, tried to sign an agreement to front this for me and a whole lot of stuff. One day in there as well, I also decided to move back to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> so after deciding to come here, yeah. You tried a few times. A few things, yeah. Fasa, you're like, yeah. Okay, let me go back. Let me go back. Okay. But in between Airtel and Vodafone, I started a payment company called Paysenger. Okay. Which basically was a social payment platform. Mm. Um, so um, it's literally a keypad that you would basically install on your phone. And when chatting with people, you can decide to request for money. You can decide to send money to them. You can have a conversation. You know, money conversation starts or, you know, yeah, Money conversation always starts on social media. Mm -hmm. It starts from, hey, um, crazy, where's my money? And um, can you send me that 50 bucks? Yeah. Um, can you send that money to wherever? So whilst having that conversation, um, I was like, why do you want to take that conversation from those platforms that you stay in, from WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, and all those platforms that induces people to chat, um, uh, Twitter and other stuff. Why would you move that money conversations to a money app? Mm. Why don't you stay in there okay. and have that money conversation? Right. 
and that also drove passenger, uh, meaning payment and messenger. So, okay. Yeah. Um, quite a journey you've had there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't look it like goes, it's, it's it goes. Such, yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Um, how did the transition to Yflex? In fact, where from the idea yeah. of the streaming platform? You had yeah. it, you abandoned it, or yeah. you put it on the shelf? I put it on the shelf. And then yeah. you went. What got you to go back to it? So, it's, you know, when you have something in you, mm. and if you, if, you, if you really cast your mind into doing something, and you really love it, it's still, it will still circle back. Yeah. Even when you move away from it, that's true. you would, like, in a year, two or three years, be like, nah, come I need to, to really go yeah, back yeah, to this. Yeah, so that was the thing. But then back at Airtel and Vodafone, mm. while I was doing stuff around innovations and stuff, we've met a lot of streaming companies. Okay. And we literally have given them deals, you know, mm. come back, stream, bring your platform to. We were trying to, like, you know, move Ghana into the whole digitized agenda where we... You know, there's a lot more people that buy internet or data and mm -hmm. do not really know what to do with That's it. True. To the exception of going on YouTube, YouTube and some few platforms. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to give them more options. So we called, I mean, I don't want to call some of the streaming companies' names, but we called a lot from the biggest to the smallest. Mm. Come to Ghana, have meetings with them, um, you know, conferences. Um, tell them to come in and build something with us as right. telcos and help drive that agenda and help, you know, get people to do more on our network mm -hmm. but they never could so that was one thing i was like we're giving you things on a silver platter you know like in as much as you lose some part of your revenue we're giving you an opportunity to grow overnight mm -hmm. with with these networks they were like nah um they want to realize their full revenue they don't want to do some kind of bailing they want they don't want to so there's a whole lot of stuff that so that was when ideas were coming i was okay. like well um i could step out build this and because i'm a tech guy i really yeah, understand yeah, the yeah, protocols yeah. Um, then again, I moved to the Netherlands. I started working with um, a media tech company, um, uh, which gave me like a broader understanding of, you know, uh, sorry, not media tech initially, um, a legal tech, legal. legal. Tech, okay. So um, it, gave, it gave me more understanding to legalities of businesses and other stuff. And then I had um, an offer from um, um, a media tech company. So that media tech company was basically building platforms for companies like, you know, all the streaming platforms you see. So okay. they are on top of the food chain. Ah. Yeah, and I went in as a commercial person. I was the head of product marketing there. Okay. Um, but that, that, that gave me, that role gave me a broad understanding mm -hmm. about how the, the entire streaming, chain. entire value chain yeah. of streaming, even though I wasn't a tech guy in there, I really got to really understand the full chain yeah. and a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. And, um, and, and my next move wasn't also in conflict of them. Also because um, they are on top of the, they build, and then we, what I'm doing now is we service. Okay. So, um, and, and when I saw a sort of golden opportunity, I was like, why not? And my contract was also ending. Okay. And COVID came through and they were like, you know, you guys need to, so companies were laying off, mm -hmm. ramping up. I was like, dude, I'm still being pushed back to the same angle again. Yeah. Go back, build that platform, get it working and stuff. Mm. So that was when all those ideas came. Okay. And then I started thinking about who to call because um, I knew how to build it. I knew who could help me build it. Mm. And um, I knew how to market it. But you need content. Mm -hmm. That wasn't my expertise. Right. So in as much as we techies have ideas or even if you're a commercial person, you might have a great idea building platforms. Right. The reality is you will need somebody else to give you the soul of the business. Yeah, that's true. Um, even though your tech will be powering everything, um, it's fast signups, everything goes by. You, the, the, the soul of every streaming company is the content, yeah. whether music yeah. or yeah. videos or any kind mm -hmm. of thing you want to build. So I started calling people. Um, called a whole lot of people, people that I knew that had connected me to companies back at Airtel and Vodafone who were doing streaming and wanted to build them on board, uh, bring them on board locally and internationally. Mm. So I started calling people away from Singapore, Malaysia, people right. that I knew them right. in Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, and other places. And then um, I remember it dawned on me, I was like, hey, um, my current partner, Bright, I was like, why don't I call Bright? Um, a friend of mine actually was like, why don't you call Bright? I was like, yeah, 
I, I know he's so really he was good. Into content development he's, at the time. He he was into he was actually working for a, another content company and also moved out to build something on his own, similar okay. to what I was also okay. doing. Okay. So I called him. He's like, dude, I'm actually trying to do the same thing. Right. So why don't we combine uh, resources? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've got the content, I have the links, the people. Um, I've worked in streaming industry for quite a very long time, okay. not uh, media industry media for a very industry, long yeah. time. So he knows how to get the content on board. He knows who to call and stuff. Um, he's actually um, been able to get some content that is sitting already mm. that we need to start with. I was like, okay, well, I can, I can help build the platform. And that was it. So that was, that was the birth of Wifelix then. Okay. So um, we started with like a lot of namings, wanted to call it that, call it that. And we were like, well, what do we want to fix in Africa? Because sometimes if you want to choose a name for a business or you want to create a purpose, if you want to know how you want people to know you, it's always with what you want to do. Yeah. What, what problems are you trying to fix yeah. um, in, 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 in the area or the location you want to run your program? So um, we were thinking, we were like, well, there's a huge issue. So now we're going to Wifelix now. Mm. Um, there's, 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 there's a big well, issue. Before we go into that, yeah. finish up with the name. Yeah. Let me go for a break. Because yeah. I have this juice. I need to finish up. It's a juice up. <laughs> I need to finish it up. Yeah. And then we'll go into Wifelix proper, proper. Yes. So how did you settle on the name eventually? So um, we, we were like, well, um, the name Flex, even on on the Play Store and other places, resonates with streaming yeah. in a lot, a lot of ways. That's true. Um, there, are, there are a lot of bigger platforms. Even there's iFlex, uh, exactly. PostFlex and others. Yeah. So we're like, well, Flex is a constant thing to have. But why would you want to place Flex? You want to place, or place it on a Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi signifies data. Okay. The issues in Africa is data. Mm. So why don't you use our content plus data to serve customers in Africa? So Y Flex. So Y Flex. Awesome. So Wi Fi and the Flex. And the Flex. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are still having a very interesting conversation with Louis uh, Manu. Uh, he's a co founder for Y Flex and uh, he's giving us the genesis of the story. Uh, we are going to Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and all of that. Those of you who know the Bible very well, I'm sure you can follow. But yeah, uh, and it's been a very, very, very inspirational story so far. A story of not giving up, particularly when you have something that is so strong in you. You feel so strong that this thing can work. Um, you see how it kept going in circles. you go in, come back, come and try something, then go try again. And so it suggests that it is possible. It is very, very possible. And today he's built a very amazing platform. Um, when we return from this break, I will take you through that very discourse of Wifelix. Um, the journey has come through so far. They've, listen, they're not just in Ghana. They are in a lot of African countries operating and doing very, very well in a lot of countries. Even though they are relatively young, they just started and they are doing such amazing work. Uh, so we'll talk about all of that, though. Um, like I said, this is a business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB. My name is Kobna Chen Chen. We'll be back after these messages. When we connect, everything is possible. Whatever seems unreachable becomes even closer. Building partnerships. Redefining the norms. Because when we connect, being there becomes possible and new ideas come to life. Stay ahead and stay connected with MTN Business Broadband, superior internet solutions that drive your dreams. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244 308 111. My son, there's more blessing in giving than receiving. Kwa, when you fear for you now, and Kobo the makers in Sri Anu Deuro. The pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world 
and bless the world. My name is Papa Makers. You're from your Grandpa Makers. My name is Junior Makers. Me Dean the Mama Makers. My name is Senior Makers and I'm here to give you some very good news. The Makers Electronics Company Limited is giving you up to 87% in this festive season. This is what I call quintessential immaculatability. Dramo! Go and tell mom and dad about the Makers Blessing Attack Robo. We at Makers, we believe in the number seven. Which stands for perfection. Future makers, a Wataifa Bokina Highway, Amasa Maizongo Junction, Ashama Valko Flat, Kumasi, Makers, a Wahine Makokobe, Thousand Atakrade, Efia Kuma Number Nine Market, Fre, 055 222 2253, Anna 055 222 Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we are back, and uh, this is a juice up that I'm having. Uh, you are wondering why I've been taking it since the beginning of the show is because COVID is real. <laughs> and so <laughs> this is pineapple with mint. I finished with the neem tree one. Uh, it's just like this. Uh, you can go ahead and contact 0557 Just call them 0557 or 055 nine five eight and just it's just a normal juice but it's really 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 healthy for you um uh, louis has been trying it and i'm sure he will attest to it subsequently but you will see uh l let's get back to the conversation louis and i'm really really happy we are doing this to be honest with you because uh, when i go onto your platform and i see a lot of things i i really don't i don't see it as even a new thing it's like Listen, this has been there. Been, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, it competes with all the other popular ones we see and hear about and yeah. like. What made you so sure, so convinced that why Flex was going to succeed? In fact, why the principle of uh, well, two Africans creating a platform that will serve Africans? What made you so sure, so convinced that this is going to be a hit in Africa? After being with telcos for some time, and also understanding the dynamics of the market, okay. we really okay. know that, um, I mean, for every commercial person, you would know that literally, for every product you come out, you need to understand the country economic factors. Mm. Especially when you want to launch in Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, Tanzania, and all the other. Right. You really need to understand um, how the market, market is structured, who is doing what, mm. and the opportunities in there. We saw one big problem, mm. and um, in terms of content in general, we saw that there wasn't one big platform that, I mean, there, there were little ones out there. Yeah. Um, the ones that we knew was going to do something big had folded out of yeah. Africa. And um, we knew there wasn't one generic platform that houses, that houses African genuity, originality, mm. and our traditionalism on, on, on a specific platform. Yeah. If you consider if you look at the, if you look at spain and other places even when they, they, they create content you still have their, the their, original elements, the original in, the, elements right. in there the uk people does the same yeah, americans yeah, yeah. does americans the same, the same yeah. ours yeah. we have the same we are creating the content out here but it doesn't get out there right so you would Could find maybe because maybe we have weak industries maybe movie industries and the like so we are not producing I, I wouldn't say weak industry i mean the opportunities are out there it is left for somebody like you and i to really look yeah. at the market and say well we need to put something on top right that would house everything sure so um i mean there were opportunities out there before or the people had similar ideas like facebook and others before facebook actually came out That's it wasn't that the people were weak yeah. but it was that somebody need to like take that bold step mm. to be able to do that right and we saw the opportunity we saw a bigger problem out there mm. because um it was as much as um, as much as you create content we've seen a lot of people put movies and you know it's free on youtube mm -hmm. and we were we were like well people create content in the uk in the netherlands in other places and it's still not free. It's yeah. being put on yeah. bigger and smaller platforms to okay. be able to monetize. Right. Uh, we've seen a lot of African content now mm -hmm. landing into um, uh, places or platforms that are free. You get me? True. And they have to like they have to build their base to a certain angle before they can actually make money right. off it. 
So one huge aspect out there, there's a lot of young creators creating a lot of content mm -hmm. that are fighting their way through to build yeah. and put it on these bigger platforms. That is also another stuff yeah. out there. So why should we have that issue? Why should there not be one single platform that doesn't really care about how you created it or what comes out that look at very low, medium, high standard right. of consolidating these content mm -hmm. and allowing people to access it. On the consumer side, we also saw that there was a huge gap because there's one thing getting access to these big platforms to be able to consume content. Mm. And there's other thing also being able to pay for that content. Yeah, that's true. So you pay an average between $7 to 15 17 sometimes $25 yeah. to be able to get access to these platforms. Yeah. That's number one. Mm -hmm. After you need a huge amount of data bundle <laughs> to be able to stream that yeah, content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So literally most of these big streaming platforms are targeting the top 50, 7 to 15% of the market. Mm. And then they are the people using all these big platforms. Mm. What of the rest of the 85%? These are the guys that so are stuck on are TVs. Cut out, technically. Cut out. Yeah. These are the people streaming, going. Um, these are the people that put on their data, mm. watch something small on and YouTube, then and off. then turn it off. <laughs> these are the same people that will sit behind their TV sets and watch, you know, uh, free to air, uh, any movie that comes on. So they actually know all the channels. They're like, mm. well, two o'clock, these guys are going to yeah. show a movie. Yeah. I need to listen. I need to do this. this. So they've got programming in mind why should we go through that process i'm not saying they shouldn't watch free to air they are meant for us it's free for everyone so essentially but that's a solid audience except solid that audience. they are they are prevented from all of this they are cut out from all of this because yes. they do not have access to they do not have access to proper mind. internet mm. um they have access to d data not enough data not enough data to be able to consume that mm. content that's number one i see they need to pay a lot yeah they need to have credit card yeah. why should I mean, mobile money is everywhere in, the, in, in Africa. There's, there's airtime also mm. put, made by, by, by the telcos yeah. that enables payment as well. So it's another source of payment, direct career billing. Mm. So why should there be another big alternate way? Even though we're pushing people through, well, go get a card, go get a visa card. Yeah. Not everybody is into that. Yeah, yeah, that's there's true. a whole huge number of people mm. in Ghana that do not even, they you know, even have bank accounts, bank right? accounts yeah, and yeah, stuff, yeah. but they have mobile money wallets. Yeah. They buy airtime. So we looked at ways that we could bridge the gap, enabling quick payments, quick signups, and um, thereby also giving them access to one platform that houses everything, okay. and then giving them data on top of that. So if I understand you correctly, <clears throat> your model, much as it resembles what the others have, the bigger platforms that have been in existence for much longer have and the like, um, you have gone a, a step further to aside creating the platform, getting same fantastic content, of course, with a lot more African uh, African focus. Yeah. Um, for the many people who do not even have a okay, so essentially you have a lot of payment options. Yeah. So if I have a uh, data, let's say I'm using MTN and I have data and I want a subscription on Wireflex, I don't necessarily have to go and get a Visa card or anything. No. I can just Perhaps use a, is it a short code exactly. or go to the app or exactly. something of the sort. Exactly. And then there's a direct debit either for my um, credits, the normal credits, yeah. or for my mobile money wallet. Yes. And that's exactly it. How has the feedback been? Um, I know you're in a few countries in, in Africa yeah. already. Uh, how has the feedback been so far? It's, it's been phenomenal. Um, when we launched last year in August, we started a technical launch okay. in Kenya and it was amazing. Wow. Um, we did around 3,000 customers in a month. Mm. It was a test for us. We wanted to know how far we can go with our platform, if mm. people were gonna resonate with it. Do people love the, the usage? Our streaming capacity is going to be okay. Um, uh, CDNs, delivery networks, how is the streaming, um, uh, streaming quality going to be like? Mm. Um, do we have things that we've created for the app acting the same way I, that it needed, it needed to act? Yeah. And these were the, the stuff that we, so we tested it all through till December. Mm. And in December, we launched in a commercial deal with Vodafone and MTN here mm. in Ghana. Okay. And that is when we launched. Um, we launched commercially in the country and mm. it was really good. Um, within the first month, we did up to almost 30,000 customers in Ghana. Wow. And in one month? In, in one month. Wow. Um, 
from there way through till now we've done almost 200,000 customers oh, that's um, nice. from Ghana, Nigeria and Kenya. Mm. Um, currently we have most of our customers from Nigeria. We launched Nigeria in June this year mm. and it's been phenomenal so mm. far. The, the uptick's been amazing. Mm. And um, to now, I mean, um, just a few days ago I was talking to my, um, my other co-founder and we were like, um, even comparing to other streaming platforms prominent in Africa, yeah. we are the fastest growing yeah. streaming platforms. Yeah. We've seen how much, how many customers they've done for the past nine or 10 years they've mm -hmm. been in the region. Mm. Um, and comparing to what we've done, it is, it is phenomenal. Mm. And we like the way Africans love our platform. We love the way people come back and do a whole lot of stuff. Um, we started going to like creative, crazy content productions. Mm. Um, coming up with our own Wifelix originals, awesome. original series, awesome. original movies. Wow. Um, we've promised about 20 of them next year, but I believe we're going to do more. Mm. Um, the series that we've started with, um, each season is spans between 10 to 23 um, episodes. episodes. Wow. Um, for season. four, Yeah, for four seasons, um, which is quite popular and out there. And mm. we, 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 we actually move the platform to the next level awesome and 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 this is basically us interesting charlie shabri guy <laughs> I, I what do i say yeah i can't say much but amazing amazing Thank work you. done so far um uh, i don't even know where to start <laughs> from but yeah <laughs> amazing work done so far I'll, I'll be very honest with you i i like i said i've gone i've gone on on there i've seen a few things and i've been very very impressed and I was particularly intrigued when the first thing that I saw when I went to the payment option was was not necessarily credit card. It was just asking me which network. I should choose the network or whatever. Yeah. And then whether I want it deducted from my airtime Time, yeah. or I want to use a mobile money yeah. option. Yeah. And that was it. I was like, okay. That is that is really that's one key factor yeah, for us. Yeah, 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 because yeah. for every country we launch, we look at the country economic factors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What really drive people into subscribing to a product mm. and we give them exactly that mm. we go through telcos that's our business model right and i think it's one of the um uh, it, it is quite tough getting a telco deal mm. but when you're able to nail that down if it's there's a bit of flexibility should, for your customers should as your well competitors bigger brands bigger ones decide to opt for this model won't that push you out of business it, it won't mm. because they'll still be pricing their products the same way they price oh by the way ah the pricing was one of the, I think you said yeah. $3 or so? Yeah, so we, we do um, $2.50 okay. if you are paying with card and you don't select a network. Okay. Because you don't belong to bills. These networks that we okay. are with, okay. we've discounted our packages for them. Okay. So like in Ghana, in, if I talk in USD terms, we are charging like 0 0.85 cents a day, okay. uh, 50 cents a week, yeah. $1.50 a month. Mm. So in Ghana CD, three CDs um, uh, weekly, daily 50 pairs worth, and a monthly nine CDs. Okay. No one is doing that. So if I'm on Wiflex now, yeah. I can decide to subscribe for a day, a week, or a month. month. Yeah. I don't necessarily, it's, it's not bound that by hook or crook, I have to pay for a month, no. even if I can't afford it. So no. if I have 50 pairs worth, yeah. I can still subscribe. You can, you can still get to watch anything. Access. I realize you have some television stations on there as well. Yes, yes. So we just don't have content. We have over 30,000 hours of content. Um, span between um, just videos, movies, mm. um, telenovelas, and a whole lot of stuff. Mm. And then we've got live streaming channels as well. Yeah. So look, in Ghana, we have the likes of um, Metro TV. Um, uh, we signed a very important deal with them, a very big partnership between us and mm. them, um, um, championing the cause of um, streaming in Ghana. Mm. Um, we have other channels, local channels yeah, in Ghana yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, we have DWTV, we have Trace TV, Trace okay. Africa, mm. we have Bloomberg, which is also the quite platform, the expensive very, very on other platforms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bloomberg is on. So with, um, with that subscription, I still get to access to everything. I get access to everything. You know, for other platforms, they will tell you, well, you have only a mobile access or you have a web access. Yeah. We don't limit people. Yeah. We are on so mobile. So there's nothing like screen limits? No. Four screens or no. two screens? Here you just go in there, that's it. We give you access to everything. Why should there be a limit? If, you are, if there's content, why should there be a limit? Hmm. There shouldn't be. You should have access to everything available on the platform. That's it. Interesting. Louis Menu uh, is the co-founder uh, for Wifelix. And uh, today he's taking us 
on a different level. It's taking us to a totally different level. I mean, we've we've gotten to appreciate a lot more. Listen, if you are watching right now, um, you have a smartphone, a device, a television, anything of the sort, uh, just go on to the App Store, to the Play Store, uh, download Wi-Flix, W-I-F-L-I-X, right? Yeah. W-I-F-L-I-X. Just go there, download, uh, start with a free plan even, and just get to see what is there. And then you can make your own decisions. Yeah. And I have seen it. I think it's a good thing, uh, particularly also because it's Ghanaian by Ghanaians for Africans, yeah. all of us. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a really huge thing he's doing. Louis, thank you so much for joining us thank and for, you. for uh, this very, very intriguing conversation. And uh, thank you too for taking time off to watch us at home. My name is Kobna Chenchen Boati. Many thanks for watching this episode of 21 Minutes with KKB. Show was probably brought to you by MTN Business, your partner for growth. And also uh, First National Bank, the bank of the changeables. And of course, the Makers Electronics, they also uh, supported us with this particular episode. We shot this uh, episode of the show at uh, the Millionaire's Club. <laughs> That's how we call it. Selassie Bar and Grill inside Ashalibu Trade, my job. It's a coded location. Please, uh, if you're not part of the family, you know it. <laughs> so, yeah, we are here uh, having a very good time here. Um, I'll see you soon, hopefully, uh, with another guest you expect it. Business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB was proudly brought to you by MTN Business Broadband. First National Bank, Bank of the Changeables. The Makers Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge, with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics.